there's been a lot of confusion about what PBL stands for. Now, in this course, we're always going to use PBL to mean problem-based learning. But what is that actually? What is a problem and how can you learn from it? Well, there are many different interpretations as to what this could be. So a problem is a tool for learning. It tells you a lot about the content of the learning and not so much about how it's organized, which means that you can use problems in many different ways and many different systems. Some people choose to use problems in a very short space of time, even one day, maybe one week. And some people choose to use problems over entire semesters in a very complex and interwoven way that includes lectures and other forms of learning. So that is the organizational side of the learning. What we're going to talk about today is more problem as a content-based tool for learning. A problem indicates that something is unclear or ill-defined. It even implies in everyday language that something needs to be solved. But actually, a problem in learning is not so much about the solution, because we're not like professionals trying to resolve someone else's situation. Our problem, our issue, is actually to learn something. So the problem is a vehicle for learning something new, something that we did not know. So why use a problem instead of just having someone tell us? It's because science has shown that we don't tend to learn very well when someone just tells us something. Instead, we have known for over a hundred years that when we look at a situation that we don't understand, that has some unclear elements and that makes us wonder, we tend to be more interested in the contents and knowledge we need to find a solution. So yes, it may be a byproduct that we find a solution, but that's not the key issue with a problem for learning. The key issue is that the problem serves the knowledge within a context that is motivating and interesting for us as learners. Let's be more specific. What is specific about a problem that, for instance, is not the same as a case, is not the same as a list of instructions, is not the case as simply telling a story? A problem invites us to think in ways that we haven't thought before. A problem invites us to tackle a situation creatively, to come up with questions and learning issues that force us to go and research beyond our comfort zone into new areas of knowledge. This is not the same, for instance, as a sheet with instructions where you simply have to apply things that you have read before or been told before. When you simply apply what you've been told before, what you are doing actually is just using knowledge that is already there to put it into practice. With a problem, it's the other way around. You have a situation, but you do not yet have the contents or knowledge that you need to find a solution. So you have to go out and do some research. You have to go out and ask people, read books, look at videos, whatever it takes to find the content or knowledge to find that solution. Can you see the difference between these two things? We have to be particularly careful in that PBL has sometimes been used in the literature and by people just talking about it casually to mean project-based learning. Now, you can indeed have problem-based projects, which are projects in which students are confronted with a complex real-life problem that they will need a long time and a lot of resources to formulate and then solve. But the majority of projects are simply a form of active learning. Yes, it's motivating for students. Yes, they get to actively participate in their education. But generally, they are not working with a problem. Generally, when they are working with a project, they will be given specific instructions of something that they need to build, then we call this an assignment project, or they will be given very strict boundaries for what they need to research or do, in which case we call this a subject project. Neither of these are problem-based, because a problem, by definition, does not have clear boundaries, so it will often require an interdisciplinary take. There's also some confusion between the case method and problem-based learning. Some people will say, well, both methods can use cases. Yes, but it depends how you use them. You see, in the case method, you are given a case, but you are given some time beforehand and some notes to help you study the case before you come to class. In PBL, it's the other way around. 
you first get the case with no prior information and no other knowledge to help you interpret the case. So you're confronted direct, head-on, with a situation that you don't understand and have no means of reading, except through your prior knowledge. And this is the important difference. If you are able to activate your prior knowledge because you have nothing else to go on, science has shown that you're much more likely to be motivated and to be able to remember what you learn in the long run. This is not the case when you're given the case to read at home, with a list of questions, for instance, that narrows down your thinking and prevents you from activating the full range of your prior knowledge. So, if I had to summarize the difference between problem-based learning and other forms of active learning, it has to do with the role of the problem as an activator of prior knowledge and a motivator for students to place new knowledge in context in a way that they can remember it in the long run.